guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be covering the most frequently asked question I get, what all is done to my car. As you guys know, she takes a beating every time I drive it. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything inside and out, under the hood, underneath. So let's get into it. So what we have here is a 2000 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. No, it's not a WS6. I never claimed it was. I know a lot of people think it is just because of the hood, but actually this is an aftermarket hood. It's a little bit more aggressive than a stock WS6 hood. Um, the only difference between a regular Firebird Trans Am and a WS6 is basically the wheels they come with. They come with like 17 by nine, five spoke wheels. Mostly they have like a different exhaust um, some badging, of course the Ram Rare hood, the bigger spoiler that some Firebirds don't come with. But overall, this car pretty much has all those things. Um, but yes, it's just a regular Trans Am. So originally this car had a flat hood. I had another 2000 Trans Am at the time. It was pewter and it had this hood on it, but it was black, like the factory coating that comes on these. So I put it on this car, sold the other car, and then I recently just got this hood painted. Did a pretty good job, color matched it good. I spent hours getting it to fit right with the headlights, all of those things. Overall, pretty happy with how it looks. Definitely looks a lot better because this car, honestly, guys, is, is pretty dang clean, especially with considering all the things that I put it through. Um, I keep it pretty clean. Sometimes it gets dirty from just taking it out, thrashing, but <clears throat> yes, the car is pretty clean. No real dents or major scratches or anything like that. You know, typical rock chips on the front. The wheels are 19 by eight and a half ESR S01s on the front. Um, Gunmetal, I believe, uh, plus 30 offset, but I have um, ARP extended studs with a one inch billet slip-on spacer. Car does have C5 Corvette brakes I'd say they're a little bit better than stock. Just so if you guys are wondering, the color is maple red metallic. Um, I guess it's kind of a rare color for these cars. Um, so the back, I have the same wheels obviously in 19 by nine and a half, uh, plus 35 with a half inch spacer uh, with ARP extended studs. The front tires are Federals. Uh, I can't remember the name. They are Federal 595s. They're pretty grippy. Um, they probably only have like 500 miles on them. I got them recently. The rear tires are Achilles ATR Sport 2s. Um, they're actually brand new. So I got the tire nipples on them. Uh, 275, 35, 19s. Um, I've, you know, I get them like 80 bucks a piece. They're pretty cheap and they perform well, last really good. They don't really delaminate de or anything weird. They're just a pretty good tire. So moving to the back, we got some like, I think they're called like Corsa clone tips. Um, got quite a bit of carbon on them. All right, so now I'm gonna pop the hood. As you guys take a look. So it's a 416 cubic inch board and stroked LS3. I guess it's a 6.8 liter. Um, built by Vengeance Racing. It's a Scoggin Dickey short block with trick flow 215 heads it's got a vengeance camshaft uh, on their dyno it made 504 to the wheels um, i got it uh, retuned on a mustang dyno i took some timing out put colder spark plugs in the rear two cylinders uh, just to kind of make it more safe so i'm not really i don't really know how much it makes now uh, i'd say it's probably close to 500 wheel but uh it's got a lot of torque it runs really good um <clears throat> so one of the things that this car came with were Yelaterra uh, lightweight rocker arms. And one night I was really beating on her and uh, I get back and let, let, let it cool off. And uh, <clears throat> I hear some tapping. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is. So um, I knew it wasn't a rod knock because um, I know what those sound like. 
Uh, luckily, this car has never done that. Knock on wood. But uh, I get home. I take the valve cover off, and I saw that the push rod pushed right through the rocker arm. So I got some stock LS1 rocker arms. I bought uh, the brass bushing trunnion upgrade, and I put that in there. I've probably been running that uh, two to three years now. And I have the MSD box set at 6,000 all the time. That's what I use as my rev limiter. That's why it sounds the way it does. Um, but I have it at a safe, safe 6,000 RPM. Um, you guys know I bounce it off that all the time. It's got a oil catch can. I check it uh, here and there periodically. It's got fast fuel rails. Um, Nick Williams ported throttle body. Um, fast 92 millimeter intake. I had to replace the power steering pump shortly after I got the car. I guess it was the original and it didn't really like my beating, so. It works pretty good. I never have any power steering issues and never boils over or anything. The worst that happens is the this is self-venting cap, so sometimes some fluid comes out of there when it gets really hot. Still has AC, works great. Everything works on the car other than the cruise control um, because I had to run the oil cooler lines through there, um, you know, against the frame and K-member and all that stuff. So I had to disconnect the cruise control in order for that to work. So that's the only thing that doesn't work. I guess I didn't specify earlier when I first started talking about the motor, but it's, you know, forged internals. Um, I've never had any issues other than the rocker arm issue. Um, it doesn't overheat. So my first time to OSW, it got up around 2.30 and I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I've been told that, oh, just run distilled water and some uh, a thing of water water in your radiator and it'll be fine. So I did that and this car honestly has never got over 205. So yeah, it's a stock radiator. I have the um, oil cooler with a fan on it. I run Valvoline VR1 20W50 oil, pretty thick. Um, oil pressure stays around 40 most of the time. So yeah, that's pretty much it under the hood. All right, so let's take a look at the interior. So first we got the Momo competition steering wheel with the NRG quick release and hub. This is ebony black. Pretty clean. No cracks in the dash. No cracks in the door panels. Power windows. It used to have a power seat. The other side still power. Stock seat. This seat is some kind of Sparco. Can't remember the name of it, but it reclines. It's got a adjustable slider. So got the back seats and everything. I put a fire extinguisher over there where the passenger side seat bottom was. I didn't want to drill any holes or anything, so I just mounted that one over there. With the existing holes, I just had a through bolt, some lock washers and nuts, and mounted it that way. The tape is so the pin doesn't rattle, but Hopefully I never have to use that, but it's there if I need it. I took the little cubby hole out and put this bezel with this factory convertible top switch and I wired it in to use as the switch for my electric exhaust cutout. So you hold down to open the cutout and then you press up just to close it. It works pretty well, it looks clean. To me, sometimes less is more. I like the simple look. Right here is an MGW race knob. I think it's only offered for vets, or at least it was at the time um, I got it. So since it didn't fit F-body, there's like a little plastic insert in there with threads. So I re-threaded it to F-body shifter, and I believe it's M16 by 1.5. And then there's a little set screw as well. It's also MGW shifter. Works really well, doesn't vibrate. It's got like insulator and stuff, so it doesn't rattle and make noise. Um, crisp shifting works really good i like it question i get asked a lot do i have an e-brake no it doesn't have a hydro and honestly the factory one doesn't even work um, i never use it it doesn't lock up it doesn't do anything it won't even keep the car from rolling if it was on a hill so yeah i don't know if anybody was wondering but i'll show you back here so Nothing much going on back here. You can flip down the seat if you need to put tires and tools and stuff back here. It's got this little thing that folds down. Like this. And down there 
is where you slide in your t-tops little provisions for them to sit down in there if you want to cruise the tops off but yep factory speakers nothing too crazy so we're on our way to the shop i'm gonna get this car up on a lift so i can show you guys underneath and what all's done to it suspension wise So we got the car up on a lift, start at the back. Got a Magnaflow cat back. I just close the cut out when I want the car to be quiet. Honestly, it's pretty dang quiet with it shut. I'd say almost stock. Three inch inlet and then dual two and a half inch outlets to the tips. Got a Mosier 12 bolt, Yukon Posi 373 gears. Got UMI adjustable pan hard bar. Shine the light on here. Got strain lowering springs. I think they're like one inch lowering in the back. Um, we got UMI lower control arm brackets that move the mounting point down. Um, three adjustable holes there. I got it in the lowest one. Seems to work best to prevent wheel hop. Got Kony single adjustable shocks. I have them almost all the way hardened. Car still squats and plants pretty well umi sway bar we got uh, an adjustable torque arm i forget what kind it is we got three inch exhaust here's the cutout made by qtp uh, connection goes up through the floor into the switch we got a drive shaft safety loop St stock steel drive shaft Got a three inch pace setter Y pipe. Weld in subframe connectors. I think they're UMI. Stage two trans. If you guys need T56 rebuilt or TR6060, hit up Tick Performance in North Carolina. They'll take care of you. They'll do a good job. Tick adjustable master. Works really good. You can adjust the pedal height. So we got the UMI Performance uh, Road Race K member. And it's unique because it has these plates um, for the camber adjustment. And it's got these little little stops here that's welded on that are welded on to prevent it from shifting, even if it loosens up. UMI sway bar. Bill Stein shocks with Eibach lowering springs. I forget which ones they are. Well, it's got adjustable UMI upper control arms. So right here, we got the OEM knuckle. I had my buddy Jamie at UpFab cut and shorten the outer tie rod mounts, re-welded it there. Did a really good job. He's held up for about, I guess about four years now. Um, shortened them for more steering angle. I'd say I got about 50, 55 degrees of lock. Um, here's a bracket for the C5 Corvette brakes. It's got steel braided brake lines. Got UMI adjustable lower control arms. Um, it's got a Delrin bushing in here. Got a roto joint there. It's pretty interesting, works really well. Strong, replaceable. Motor's clean, no leaks or anything. You know, typical seepage. Anytime you beat on something, it's prone to seeping. Um, no drips or anything. Stock power steering rack, no mods there. Underdrive pulley. Stock fans. The oil filter adapter is made by Improved Racing. This is the oil feed line to the oil cooler. And this is the return. So when I do oil changes, I have to tie this up so that I can get the drain plug out. Not a big deal. Runs through the K member. I have it all heat wrapped. Got the header wrapped right there. Don't need to be heating up the oil for no reason. Then we encase it 
in some heater hose here so it doesn't itch through the line. It's 10 AN, goes above the sway bar, use these little brackets with the rubber insulator, keep it where I need it. Here's the cruise control tied up. You have the oil coming into the oil filter here then coming out, it's mounted to the frame with some bolts on the other side. So it comes out, made a little hole here, and then goes right into the Mishimoto oil cooler. And it comes out here. It's got a derail electric cooling fan. I have wired inside. So I'm really happy with that. It works really well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Car treats me well, I can't complain. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.